In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to learn about text animators. Make some nice, neat, templated text effects. And if you stick around at the end of the video, I got a little present for you. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so right off the bat here is something that I learned way too late in my motion design career. You can change this source text to anything you want. If you just open up this little text drop down, you can make keyframes on the source text. So if you just make a new keyframe here, and you can change this to whatever you want. So source to horse, and then make a new keyframe, and you can change it again of horse, and you can change this font to something different. You can change the styling and the color, change it to strokes and change the size, the tracking, the kerning, stroke width, anything like this. And it will just change on each new keyframe. This can only be hold keyframes, of course. Um, this cannot ease between these keyframes. I don't know how After Effects would figure that out, but this can be really useful for simple animations where you just need to change your source text on one layer. Now, to create a basic slide in animation like this, something really simple, we're gonna wanna use text animators so that we can save them and reuse them on other parts of our animation. So what I'm gonna do is hide this little text layer and start a new one here so I have something fresh. So what I wanna do is I wanna click where it says text here and click animate, and then I have all of these options that come up. And now you can add animators of really anything regular position scale rotation opacity you can animate colors strokes tracking and other things like blur and character offsets we're going to get into a lot of this stuff so let's just go ahead and add on a position and an opacity we want to slide in and fade in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a keyframe on the position and the opacity at let's say one second. This will be our ending point. We're gonna slide into here and fade in. And then we'll just go back and let's say drag it down to maybe around 35 and then opacity at zero. And then we'll go ahead and ease the second keyframes with F9, easy ease, and we have a simple slide in that can be copy and pasted on to other text layers. That is a simple introduction to the text animators. Let's take it a step further, shall we? Now, this is what I like to call the sexy slide in. You have each line, letter, or word fade and slide in by itself and then slide back out. And this is all on one block. It can work as a paragraph or lines or whatever. And we just have a few keyframes set. So let's go about making this. I'm gonna create a new block of text. Let me just copy this though, so I don't have to retype it out. I'm just gonna draw a block of character text. It doesn't have to be a block, you could just, just be whatever. Let me clean that up, there we go. Okay, so here's what I wanna do. I wanna drop down my text, open it up, and I wanna add on some animators. I wanna animate the position, and I wanna animate the opacity. Let me drag this up so we can see it a little bit better. Now to create this text animation, we need to basically have two states. It needs to have a position one where it starts down and then a position two where it animates up. So we're gonna call this, we're gonna rename this animator one into position one. This is just for our own clarity. And then we're gonna duplicate this with controller command D and we, now we have position two. And if you drop this down, you can see we have our position and opacity animators. If we wanted to add something else to it, like a rotation or something, we would just need to add those animators in as well. But we're just doing position and opacity. So now what we need to do is we need to change the position and opacity amounts in the first position. So let's pull this down a little bit because it's gonna start down. So maybe we'll go down to 35 and bring the opacity down to zero. You're not gonna notice a change on the opacity right now. 
And then on position two, we want to counteract that. So we're gonna make this negative 35, and then it's gonna move back up. And then we wanna change that opacity to 100. It's already at 100. So basically what we're saying to this is, it's gonna start at 35 and then come back up to 35, and it's going to go from zero opacity to 100. But now we need to animate this. So on the position two, let's drop down the range selector and we wanna animate the offset here. So now if we grab this offset and you move it around, you can start to see that it's animating these properties. So let's bring it back down all the way to negative 100, make a keyframe and then push it forward until all of the text is on screen. So it would be at zero here. Now, if we play it back, it's gonna look something like this. It's kind of getting there, but it's it's pretty choppy and a little weird. So let's open up this advanced property, this advanced dropdown, and let's see what we're working with. Well, I think I for now, I don't want this to animate in characters. I want this to animate in lines. So let's have it be in lines. And it's a little bit nicer now. And I think we need to add some easing to this. So let's go ahead and change a few things to deal with the easing. Well, I think we need to make it so that this shape is not a square. This shape is going to ramp down. I'm gonna, gonna explain that in a minute. Now if we change the shape to ramp down, now we're seeing that it's not animating fully all the way. We need to change the offset to get to 100 now. And if we change that, now we're getting the full animation coming on. And now we need to change some of the easing. So if we change the ease high a little bit to crank this up a little bit, maybe around 80 or 90, we're gonna have a little bit nicer of an animation when it slides up. If we didn't do the ease high, we did the ease low, it's gonna be the wrong way. You can play with this and see how it looks. It's the wrong direction. It could be right for some text animation, but it's not this one. So let's put this back up and there we go. Here is our slide in that looks good. These are the right properties that we want. We can now change this to be characters and we'll have something like this. Looks good, but I'm gonna leave it at either words or lines. So now let's quickly go over what some of this stuff in here means. And I learned this from Kyle Hamrick's really good text animator videos, so I suggest you check those out if you wanna learn more. I'm totally stealing this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set down a new text and just put down a bunch of periods. Now, if you do this, put down a bunch of periods and you try animating the position and you just send a little bit of animation through them. So you just change the position and you change the offset a little bit. This is the easiest way to see how these different properties are affecting it. So right now we have square selected and basically all it's doing is it's sending a square through your text animator shape. If I change this to ramp up, you can see that it's basically just sending a upwards facing ramp through this. If I change it to ramp down, it's sending a downwards facing ramp through these. In my opinion, it's backwards. This looks like an upwards facing ramp, but I don't make the rules with this. And so on, a triangle sends a triangle through it. Round makes a round shape that gets sent through. And you can see how the different easing will affect these things. So I really advise that you just play around with something like this to get acquainted with these different things in here. Now for a flicker in, I took basically the same slide in that we just learned. So let me pop this open here. So I took the same old animation, the position one and position two, just to show that you can build things off of each other. And now let's go ahead and just add a new animation on top. So I'm gonna add in a new opacity. It's not under either of these animations from before, a brand new opacity. Let's go ahead and add that. And I'll keep this one at the bottom. And now what I wanna do is I wanna pop down the range selector here. I'm gonna drag this window up so you can see it better. And all I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna animate this offset from zero to 100, so, or sorry, negative 100 to zero. So it's gonna come in like this, animate in, 
but we're gonna add a little twist to this. So we're gonna turn on randomize order. So it's gonna randomize this order that the letters animate in. And then we're gonna put a little expression on the random seed like this by alt clicking on random seed and we'll type in time times any number, say 100 to give it this little flicker. This, the number, the higher the number that you choose, the faster it will flicker. Now we have a little flicker when it animates in, and then I'll just copy these keyframes in reverse when we need it to animate out. Now we have a cool flicker. So there are tons of little weird uh, properties in here too that you can just have tons of fun with as well. So for example, if I turn this off, turn on my fresh layer, I'm gonna open this up and let's say I just wanna wiggle a bunch of things around. Let me throw on a position animator and a rotation, here we go. Now with this animator, I can add what's called a selector. And if I add a wiggly selector to it, now I'm wiggling the position and rotation before. Right off the bat, nothing's happening because I didn't put in any values to the position and rotation. So if I put in some amounts, so I'm gonna put in some vertical amounts for the position and I'll put in some rotation amounts. Now I'm wiggling these letters around and we can go ahead and open up the more options and we can actually change around the anchor points of the letters to choose where they're getting wiggled from. Now, what's really useful about text animators and wiggling stuff is that most big font families support things like Unicode. And what that means is you can grab arrows and pointers, sometimes smiley faces and emojis, and you can just use these in your text and now just easily make weird kind of useful shapes like this. I do this all the time to animate arrows and stuff that would normally be really a real big pain to animate by hand in After Effects. So just really easily, I made this weird kind of rotating um, arrow line that would uh, otherwise be really hard to do. And so this is a very basic example, but if you're if you get clever with it, this can this can be really useful. Now, since you made it to the end of the video, I have a little gift for you. In the description, there is a link where you can download a bundle of text animators I have made for you to use however you would like. So all you have to do is go ahead and drop them into your presets folder. I like to drop them into the text um, folder. You can go ahead and rename them. You're not gonna offend me. All right, I just did this for organization. And then to apply them, you can just search in the effects and presets or use FX console. And then when you make a new text layer, you can just go ahead and type in whatever Nix flicker, and then you will have a nice flicker effect. Now, if you want to make your own text preset, all you have to do is make the text animation and then just grab all the animators that you want to save. And you just highlight them all here, and then you click animation, save animation preset. You need to save them to your presets folder. If you get an error, like you can't, you're, you don't have permission to save them there, then you just save them somewhere else and then drag them in and you get permission. When you're doing this, you need to make sure that you don't grab things like, for example, the source text or other properties that you don't want applied to that um, animation preset each time because if I was to save the source text along with these then it would apply the text flicker every time you applied that animation preset. So go ahead and enjoy these text animators. Use them however you'd like. You do not need to give credit or anything. Although if you'd like to tag me on Instagram or something I would love to see what you do with them. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching my YouTube video. If you liked it, you're probably gonna like these. But check them out, all right? I'll wait. <laughs>